singular value decomposition or SVD is perhaps the most widely used unsupervised machine learning algorithm, maybe apart from neural networks. It has made splash news by being one of the main ingredients to solve the Netflix prize. More generally, SVD has great applications in recommending systems, which are at the core of many, many business like Netflix, Amazon, YouTube, and even Facebook, Twitter, and Google. Big, big money is at stake here. So what is SVD? Well, what SVD is going to focus on is some matrix. The columns of the matrix may be different movies, while the rows are users, and each entry could then be the rating of the column movies by the row users. And one of the classic problems of SVD is trying to predict unobserved data of this matrix or to make predictions for users or movies that have not come out yet. Now the basic intuition of what we'll want to do is to regroup the movies into different categories like comedy, action, science fiction, and so on. However, crucially, we don't want to impose our own categories because our choices of categories are likely to be flawed. Instead, what we'd like to do is to characterize such categories by how users have rated them. Intuitively, two action movies will be loved and hated by the same kind of users. So intuitively, if two columns are similar, then this means that the two movies belong to the same kind of movie categories. Similarly, we'll want to group our users into categories of users. And crucially, the way these groupings are going to be chosen will be data-driven. That is, the movie and the user categories will be computed from our matrix. Slightly more formally, each movie will not be of one single category. Instead, each movie will be composed of different categories. In linear algebra, we have a very clever way to write this. We'll consider that each movie is a linear combination of basis unit vectors where the basis unit vectors correspond to the categories we want to highlight. Intuitively, typically, a movie can be half comedy and half action. Now, moreover, what we'll want to make sure of is that the categories, comedy or action, are fundamentally different from each other. And this corresponds to saying in linear algebra terms that the basis vectors, the, the key categories that we want to take out from our data, will have to be orthonormal. And so the set of categories will have to form an orthonormal basis. Once again, we'll do the same for users, but we want as well the user categories to match the movie categories. In other words, we'll want the comedy user category to love the comedy movie category and to be orthogonal to the action movie category. In fact, each user category will be represented by the same unit vector that is used to describe the corresponding movie category. And each user will be a linear combination of user categories. Quick technical detail, if the number of users is larger than the number of movies, we'll have to create useless user categories, which will still be unit vector orthogonal to all the basis vectors, but the ratings by these useless user categories will be zero for all movies. That's just a technical detail. And crucially, given the decomposition of a movie and a user, we can estimate the rating of the user of the movie by some sort of scalar product, U transpose M, which is obtained by multiplying the corresponding coefficients, alpha 1, beta 1, alpha 2, beta 2, and by multiplying each of these coefficients by some so-called singular value, which computes how a user of category I rates a movie of category I. The breathtaking theorem of SVD asserts that there is an essentially unique way to determine categories the way we intend to. More precisely, any rectangular matrix M can be factorized as a product X sigma Y transposed, where sigma is a non-negative diagonal square matrix attached to a rectangular zero matrix. 
and where the rows of the matrices X and Y are the coefficients of the linear combinations of the categories that make up row users and column movies. And we want these linear combinations to be normalized in the sense that the sum of their square needs to be equal to one. Uh, actually, we demand slightly more than that, but basically this boils down to saying that the matrices X and Y needs to be orthogonal matrices. Now, one cool thing about SVD is that up to some technicalities, SVD is unique. More precisely, if we demand the diagonal matrix to order its diagonal entries in a descending order, then all SVDs must yield the same diagonal matrix sigma. The diagonal non-negative entries of sigma are called singular values, and they are fundamental and intrinsic information about the initial matrix. If you've watched my previous video on principal component analysis, you may have noticed similarities between SVD and PCA. This is no accident. PCA can be regarded as a special case of SVD, where the matrix we started with is symmetric. The beauty of SVD is that no such restriction is imposed on the initial matrix. But then, just like for PCA, we may eventually neglect the user and movie categories that are associated with negligible singular values. By pruning our category list, we may then obtain an efficient summary of the input matrix, and this is awesome because having an efficient summary of the data like that allows to avoid overfitting and this will allow us to make more reliable predictions of unobserved data. And this is why SVD has won big money for big web companies. There's even more to come from SVD. In an upcoming Zettabytes video, Professor Martin Jaggi will be discussing its stunning application to machine reading. Stay tuned for that. And as well on one leader, we'll be digging deeper into the fabric of SVD.